I'm Ken Wright of Ken Wright Sellers, and we are in the beautiful small town of Carlton, Oregon, home to 2,000 souls. Uh, we are um, on a beautiful early August day here in Oregon. The summers are delightful. They're incredibly beautiful. There's 85, no humidity, uh, incredibly beautiful, beautiful weather for growing Pinot Noir, especially uh, in this region. We have our nighttime temperatures dip pretty significantly. Uh, we go down to the 50s, low 50s, and so it's a the diurnal shift is pretty pretty extreme, um, which is good for grapes. Um, cold nights uh, produce what we call fixed color. So in chemistry, uh, something that's fixed is stable, and so it stabilizes color when you have cold nights. Hot nights tend to make color less stable. Um, and it, and it can, in fact, uh, waver in its intensity over the years in, in wine. So we, we like these cold nights. And it's good for the health of the vineyard as well. But, uh, so if, we, if you, I'd love to, Austin to talk about the geology of this region and you know why does Pinot Noir excel here? All greatness that we recognize in food and in agriculture comes from the perfect marriage of plant and place. Human beings are really not a part of that picture. When, when a plant finds its perfect environment, perfect environment where all of the, all the influences, whether you know, heat summation, elevation, exposure, the, the soil, parent material, below soil, when, when everything is right, when everything is perfect for a specific plant, it, it wants to be amazing. It inherently wants to be incredibly special. And over many, many, many years, many generations, those who farm there have learned how to support that plant's mission. But they're just stewards. They're just, they're just there to ensure that their farming approach is guiding that, that plant, helping that plant achieve what it wants to achieve. To be successful with PNR, you have to put it in an environment where you put the brakes on the plant. The environment has to hold it back. If you plant it next to Syrah, next to Roussan, uh, Mourved, or anything, you can plant it with Chardonnay, you plant it next to any other variety, Pinot Noir will get to high sugars before any plant next to it. The problem with that is that if you plant Pinot Noir in a warm place, in a very warm climate, it races. It races to high sugar levels. It forces you as a grower or as a winemaker to, to harvest sooner than you'd like. In a, in a shorter season than you'd like because you have to. The sugars are, are so elevated and you know you'll end up with crazy alcohol um, and you'll end up with something that is, is, is rather than being co complex and nuanced, it will end up being a hammer. N not enjoyable. Pinot Noir, like no other variety, has the ability to connect us to place in, in a, in a trem with tremendous detail. Other varieties tend to have an inherent varietal character. It's, it's part of the DNA of that variety that overrides place and um, has a big impact on the profile of the wine. Pinot Noir is the opposite. Pinot Noir is like a blank canvas. Where it's grown is everything about what it is. Its expression is completely driven by where it is planted, completely. In 1990, we we, we, st we, we began focusing on single vineyard production, producing Pinot Noir from one location on the planet, one tiny spot. Character in the wine is driven by mother rock, what's be by what is below soil. So we never see detail in our wines until our root system is past soil and we are engaging the mother rock. And it's at that point that we, that's, that's when the handshake begins with that parent material. Um, and then the roots go much further. We, we normally would see rooting at maturity of 20, 25 to 30 feet depth. Yeah, vines are, they're amazing. They're tenacious. The average rate of development is about a foot of depth a year. Our soils are between three feet in the marine sediment areas up to 12 feet. Uh, in the Dundee area, volcanic, in a volcanic area. And so it's just a matter of time for those roots. If they're getting a foot of depth a year, eventually they get to that parent material. They begin, they begin that handshake with it, and then eventually they, they go right through it, and they go deeply into it. 
it's the parrot material that has incredible amounts of trace elements. Phosphorus, potassium, calcium, sodium, zinc, copper, iron. It's all there. That's where, that's where you have that cache of mineral that ends up creating profile. And so the vine, as it, as it begins rooting through past soil, that now it's rooting into that parent material with the aid of microbiology, which breaks down that, those trace elements into an ionic form that the plant can take up. That's the key. You have to have the microbiology to do, to do that for the plant. The plant itself cannot break down raw ore. All plants worldwide need microbiology to do that for them. They need a partner, and those are our partners. And they're delivering all these trace elements that in the end create the aromatic and flavor profile of the wine. And it's that, and, the, and again, the beauty of Pinot Noir is that that's what it's all about. It's all about that place. And it's all about the uptake of those elements and not having a varietal character that overwhelms them, but in, rather you get totally connected to that place and what it's about and the mineral of that place, which I find incredibly special. It makes it makes having a wine from a single site when properly farmed and when you have that uptake, when you get that complexity, it makes the experience of having that wine far deeper than just whether it happens to go well with your fish or your meat or whatever. It's, it's, you're connected. You're connected to a place on this planet. It's, it's, I find that incredibly special. It is the largest flow of lava on the planet. It's called the Columbia River Basalt Flow. Crazy stuff. Geologists love to talk about it. And originally, there was sand that was laid down here. This, this area was, used to be Pacific Ocean, and that's the base, that's the base of our area. The volcanic floods came 15 million years ago and created a veneer over the sand. So 15 million years forward, most of that veneer, most of that covering of basalt has eroded, and weathered, and gone away. And we're left with islands. And those islands are the areas I just mentioned. So the Dundee Hills is an island left over of basalt that, was, that came in a flood, a volcanic flood, from the other side of the state. Eola, Amity, same thing. Shehala Mountains, same thing. Around them you, have, you're, you see the marine sediments, the old stuff from the o ocean bed. When you plant Pinot Noir in volcanic material, Pinot Noir will have a fruit-driven profile. In Dundee, it's more of a red profile. You see a lot of cherry and strawberry, raspberry. Uh, Eola, it's a much darker. You're going to see cassis, plum, black cherry, blueberry, much darker profile. Uh, but in, in all cases, anytime you plant in uh, Pinot Noir in the volcanic material, you will the fruit will be the driving the driving force in its profile. Uh, whether it's red, red, blue, or black fruit, it's, it, it will be what's most noticeable, it'll be the theme of the wine. The moment you get away from the volcanics and begin and plant in the marine sediments, in the old ocean bed, much older, the wine's totally different. It becomes very rustic, very savory. You start to see things like tobacco, cedar, chocolate, anise, clove, fresh turned earth, mushroom, totally different. Totally different profile because the mineral is totally different in that in that marine sediment versus the volcanic. Totally different. You know, in the volcanic, you have a lot of manganese, you have a lot of iron. In the marine sediment, you're going to have a lot of potassium, a lot of calcium, sodium. Totally different. Really different elements. And again, it's that uptake of those elements below soil, not soil, below soil from that mother rock. It's that uptake again. It's driving profile. We celebrate that ability of the plant to connect us like that by having single vineyard production from all over this valley from the what we feel are the very very best locations and fortunately for us you know we've been here since what 86 and so um, over many years we've carefully chosen what places we work with and who we work with both are important both are incredibly important and uh, but then so these single vineyards they connect you uh, as you taste them, you're going to find that each is different. You know, we have two-thirds of our production is marine sediment driven, but each site is a little different. You, no two sites are exactly alike. Even though they may share that they are marine sediments, 
still the, the mineral makeup is never quite the same and, and so they will always be a little different one from another which is because you know, farming is everything it's everything everything uh, you can only be as good as the quality of the fruit you receive no one no winemaker is good enough to take average fruit and make it amazing nobody's that good at the top of the in the you know the top of the of our industry at the with the very best production of wine on the planet, anywhere in this world, things, things that you consider world-class, it's, again, it's never been about people. It's because that variety, or clones of that variety even, have found their perfect, perfect spot on this planet. And then people have learned how to farm correctly, how to support the plant's mission, which is really difficult. Farming is really hard because you have, it's slow to learn the lessons of, of nutrition. We take that fruit and then we, we have to transform that into something that brings you amazing pleasure. That's, that's what we do. And it's, so it's far different than growing a crop that needs to look pretty. For, so you have to, number one, you have to start by understanding the nutritional status of your place and fine-tuning your farming approach to support that plant in that place exactly. It's cr critical that you do a lot of, you do three kinds of testing. Nutritional testing of the plant, nutritional testing of the soil, and then deep core sampling to the parent material, deep core sampling for microbiology. Those three, those three tests are the report card that any professional farmer needs to understand their place and to understand what is the true nutritional status of the plant in that place. And it takes years to know a place. I mean, it doesn't come easily. It takes years to understand because you only have a season at a time. You can only see the, the response of the vineyard to whatever approach you use that year. You get to see that for that year. How do, and then you get to test and say, okay, I have the eyeball test on how the plant looks. Does it look healthier? Does it, does it perform better? You have all of the nutrition testing that will let you know whether or not the plant is in better condition. Is it is this healthier? But you only get that one year. And so it takes years to truly dial in a personalized farming plan that supports that location, that brings it to nutritional balance year in, year out. That's hard. Farming is really hard, but that's the key.